It's been a whole month since a mixed bag of everyday citizens took over Zugatti Park in New York. They are occupying Wall Street. In attempt to start a global revolution against both corporate greed and influence over politics and the economic inequalities among the population. And as you can see, these largely peaceful protests are being met with some resistance from the American authorities. Now, the Occupy Wall Street movement is going viral, not just online, but in person. And on Saturday, it came home to Victoria, one of 15 Canadian cities joining in a global day of action. A crowd of over 1,000 protesters assembled in three locations, led by a group called the People's Assembly of Victoria. We thought we'd document this day in history, so I'm strapping on a GoPro head cam and I'm going in as an observer. It's about our voice being heard. It all started on the front lawn of the legislature. Numerous people voiced their opinions about various issues from corporate greed to chemtrails. And with a long list of issues at hand, a few of the speakers were offering solutions, like Greg Hill from Change Victoria. I'm here to talk about a new opportunity to bring back honest money to Canadians and allow them to have a truly asset-backed currency and let the people know that we've done it before and that we can do it again. I graduated from Camosun College as a business student, researching and learning about and being tested on economics. Years later, I come to realize after graduating that everything I learned in college was based on a flawed economic philosophy. The system's not working. Why? Because they don't have to listen to us. Now, Switzerland has direct democracy. That allows the people to control what happens in the government. So they can, they can make legislation or stop legislation because they, they have the force, the power. I so, thought that's what democracy was. Why don't we have that then? We have representative democracy. That's where we get to go down there every four years, scratch our little name on a little piece of paper and give away our freedoms to a dictatorship for another four years to tell us what to do. Now, I wasn't surprised to see Victoria Police at the event, but I was quite taken back when I bumped into this gentleman given the fact he works at a bank. Maybe bankers need more brains. We wouldn't have so much problems if uh, economists got their predictions right. Protesters then marched up here to Fort and Douglas Street. You could call it Victoria's very own financial district. Then a gathering at Centennial Square, where two days later, a small group of people refused to leave in support of the worldwide Occupy movement. It's not a sustainable society and we're selling, well, we're selling our children short. I mean, it's just, and people have had enough of it. I, I've personally had enough of it, so. Will you be leaving Centennial Square anytime soon? Maybe to go shower, that's it. I live here now, so my tent's over there, so. As I said, I was Monday afternoon and the mayor of Victoria, Dean Fortin, was weighing in on the situation, talking to members of the movement while engaged in some rather passionate yet respectful conversation. The people who have assembled here decide not to leave. What does Victoria do? I mean, is, is this a permanent camping spot? Um, it's not something that we're even turning our mind to at this time. We recognize it's a peaceful assembly and we'll just see how it goes. I mean, we want it to remain safe for, for them and for others. That's our overall goal. Peace, order, good government. That's what we're supposed to provide. That's what we look forward to do. These are the people that are gathering in Centennial Square. And hey, they invite you to come down into the people's living room and join in the discussion in Victoria. I'm James Green for The Daily. Hey James. How's it going? Good.